Hi Capricorn, how are you? Welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. So Cappies, my Cabbage Corn friends. I don't know if some of you are new to the channel, like what is she talking about, Cabbage Corn? This goes back months ago where I was doing something, I was editing a Capricorn video and my son wanted me, wanted my attention. He, at the time, like 10, it's almost 11 now. And, um, I said, just give me a second. I just have to finish editing this Capricorn video. Or the, I have to do something with Capricorn. He said, Cabbage Corn. I'm like, what are you doing with Cabbage Corn? <laughs> cabbage corn. So, that's where you got your name. It's kind of cute, no? So, we're going to do an energy check in Capricorn. Uh, I'm going to save all my chit chat for the end. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you need to put timestamps in. I like watching. Um, I don't catch them all the time. I don't catch a lot of other readers lately I've just my life has been too busy but you know I love watching um Ramblin Mike I love that guy's personality he is just he's just a big drop of sunshine on the cloudiest of days that guy and Heidi's kind of like me he goes on and on in the beginning but he's so sweet he is thanking everybody I, I mean I should do that too I'm glad you're here I really am thank you for coming by but. And I know as he says at the beginning now, the reading has got a timestamp now as <laughs> it goes on and on and on. I don't know. Does anybody really want a tarot reader? Is it sit down? Hi, this is for Capricorn. Alright, this is what's going on. I don't know, it's so personal. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna do chit chat till the end, and look at me. So we're gonna do an energy check-in for you. Um, we're going to start with the, ooh, Scarab Beetle, magic works through you, this is cool, with my um, Animal Oracle deck. We're going to start with that to get like an overall energy of the reading for you. And then we're going to look at your energy, energy that's outside of you, but it's not you. It's within your hemisphere. It could be, could be a parent, a child, a spouse, a romantic partner. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Maybe a spouse is not necessary romantic partner maybe you have both i don't know so and then um where was we going with this like it could be a group of people it could be like whatever it is something outside of you but it's kind of it's got something to do with you and then what these two energies are creating i'm gonna look into that then with the energy oracle deck and my tarot of dreams deck and then we're gonna do something fun with cherub angels it really worked well in Sagittarius. It worked really, really well. There is an extended at the end of this reading. Um, the link is at the top of the description if you are drawn to it. And in the extended, we're going to continue to see where the energies progress into the future. So let's get started now. Now. reading the Capricorn. Overall energy theme of this reading for Capricorn. I was just looking for a lily. She's usually up here when I do my readings. You know what she is? She's laying on my son's bed because he's not here. He went to school. It's almost like she's sulking. I think she is. The two of them get along like, um, like siblings. <laughs> he's always grabbing her and she's like, I want to do my own thing and the minute he's gone, she's sulking. Like, where did he go? You have skunk spirit. Know your worth. You're very different from the others, Capricorn. And perhaps when you walk into a room, not everyone wants to walk towards you. I'm only saying. And I respect that, though. Because I think that you, um, yeah, you know your worth. You know what your good qualities are. You know what um, suits you, what doesn't suit you, and what rubs you right and what doesn't rub you the right way. And some people might know that. Like, they just know. They know if that I don't get along with Capricorn, I'm going to... But you know what? That kind of... It kind of clears the path for what is really meant for you. I really like that. I always say it too, because my grandfather, who I was so close with, he was really like a father to me. He was a Capricorn. And... Too. I can do your reading like yeah I can see that I can see that so that's the overall energy here know your worth 
Perhaps it'll be something to challenge how you feel about yourself. Something is challenging you. I, I do really feel like um, it just serves as a way and you, I almost feel like you kind of go into it quite quickly um, to understand how this challenge affects you and what it triggers within you and it's almost quickly understanding your worth on a new level again. So let's see what the, um, the cards show us specifically with your energy. Scums are so cute though. You know what? If you don't upset them, they're not going to make a stink. So maybe that's how you have to approach Capricorn. So if you don't upset them, they're not going to make a stink. Actually, my grandfather had a dog. His name was Duke. He was the dumbest dog in the world. God, he had the biggest heart. I loved him. Such a big heart. He was a huge black lab. He was really, really big. And he made a friend with a skunk. And they would go running through the farm field playing. It was the funniest thing. Yeah. So, if they don't rub you the wrong way, you're not going to make a stink. <laughs> Capricorn. It's <laughs> sort of a funny reading. Capricorn. Don't rub them the wrong way and they won't make a stink. What's going on here? Your energy. The fifth chakra. Speaking, wanting to speak, wanting to be heard. The energy outside of you, Ooh, the temple path. Oh, that's interesting. Feels like a place. So it feels like a place where people congregate. This is not your energy. I'm very specific about the reading. I've got it written down here. Not you, <laughs> exclamation mark. Energy outside of you, but in your hemisphere. Somewhere where you're going, maybe it's somewhere where you're going. Somewhere where you're being drawn to. Okay, what these two energies are creating. Wow, the goddess of the moon. Oh, that's interesting. You're going into some sort of unknown. You, you need to speak. Whoa, hello. Wow, where are you going? You've got the angel of balance and the door of romance at the bottom. goes let's keep let's keep pulling cards here i don't want to make uh, i don't want to jump any conclusions <clears throat> all right now we're going into the tarot of dreams and capricorn's energy energy outside of them what these two energies are creating. Mm, two. Two cards. Whoa. Who had that? Someone else had that this week. serious cards coming out Capricorn the two of swords the palace of swords is at the bottom here now this is just interesting because the fifth chakra came out in Sagittarius is reading but it came out over here they had the same reading as you but it came out over here and the palace of swords came out too oh no it came out in the extended there's something weird going on here, like something you want to speak. I'm, I'm feeling that again, where sometimes, and I know you guys will watch different videos, so maybe that's what's happening here, like, yeah, there's something going on. So there's some sort of indecision or block getting towards, like, a real strong clarity. A real strong clarity about something. Being sort of indecisive, but I feel like you're indecisive about it because you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know all the facts. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know everything. 
Your cards are something. You have the fifth chakra. Wanting to speak, wanting to be heard. Needing to speak, needing to be heard. Having something to contribute to say. And then you have the tree of life and the knight of wands. You are lit up about... Like really lit up about moving forward into kind of destined things for you. Things that are like you are on the path of destiny. Because this is coming in here now for you. You're on the path of destiny. And it's something that is got just going to like you feel very creative. You feel very excited about it. Very. Um, I don't know that word. I'm not saying. <laughs> I swear sometimes, I don't know if there's some people that are extremely telepathic and <laughs> try to put words into my head through the camera, I'm not saying that. Um, this is really like, you feel so intense about this. There's an intensity about wanting to speak up, wanting to take action passionately. Your destiny here <laughs> gets really intense. So let's see where this is. But then over here, so the energy outside of you, this is the thing. It's beautiful. It's calm. This is intense. Like, even if you're not showing the intensity, it's just like it feels like it's under the surface for you. You sense something so profound. Wanting to speak it, wanting to express it. The temple path. The nine of coins. Look how she's patting the dove even. Like this is a place of peace. This is a place of peace and prosperity and sovereignty. Nothing outside of this place interferes with the um, the betterment of your journeys. <laughs> and, then get this. and then you have the palace of cups. Deep, deep, deep emotions. Deep um, intuitive connections, deep feelings of creative, like love, like creativity generated through love and feelings. Same that either. Um, okay, so I honestly, I don't, I really, I feel almost like somebody is talking to me through the camera. It's driving me crazy. Okay, now, what these two energies are, the moon, the goddess of the moon, the death card, and the hanging man. Look at the, this, like, this is almost like all major arcana. What, what your energy in this energy outside, I'm peeking over to see if you can see the card, sorry. <laughs> um, what your two energies are creating Water. I just like I'm hearing and like yeah, it's almost like he's balancing over the water as he's in outer space. Like Scorpio and Pisces energy. Pisces and Cancer. Wow, like there's so much feeling and emotion. Gosh, the intensity of this. The the cycles of the moon. This is almost like I'm getting like the Garden of Eden reborn again, but in a cosmic facility. It's very, it, it, it screams this. This is what it is. Like your energy, you're aware of this. You're really intensely aware of almost like you've connected to the, your Akashic records. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm like, imagine the Akashic Records are an energetic place in the universe <clears throat> that holds the, the records of your lives that you lived, the, the lives that you have lived in lifetimes, previous lives, where you are now in your lifetime and the lives that you have yet to live. And when I imagine the Akashic Records, like it's beyond... Like, too, I mean, this card, this portrays it, the Tree of Life. 
it's beyond um, like how you evolve, how we all evolve on a conscious level, on a spiritual level. To imagine that really all of us were here on earth and we started off as a bacteria, as a pathogen and evolved through that. Like that's like the, like it's the depth of existence. It's the depth of existence, your connection to it and your, your divine course and timing in that. It's really, whew, Capricorn, this is intense. But this is so gentle and peaceful. <laughs> I just want to go back over here because this is intense. Even what's starting to be created is intense. The Lord of Romance. And the angel of love. So, you know, this feels like a very destined sort of energy that's starting to come out here. Know your worth, skunk spirit. <laughs> so cute. Let me just, this is just kind of like to bring it all down. <laughs> bring it all down to reality. <laughs> there are some things that are just meant to be stinky at certain times. <laughs> but they're so cute. Let's clarify. Let's, <laughs> your, come here Capricorn. Let me look at your energy. You want to talk, you want to speak. You have so much drive and passion to do this. It's like you know things that others don't know. The fifth chakra. Judgment and the Empress, you know, you know exactly what you want, like a reborn, reborn again. So that was coming up in Sagittarius, which is interesting. And the Empress, what you desire most, bountiful harvest. Something from nothing. Or nothing to everything, like nothing to everything. Because the judgment, they're being born again. It's... um coming back to life but like having no baggage from the past i mean coming up out of the coffin no clothing no baggage no luggage nothing like fresh new reborn and you know what you want you want this abundance and you want perhaps it's a person with a daughter romance underneath i mean the empress is is, is the mother is um it's Gaia. It's it's Mother Earth. This is you too. I almost feel like you want to rise up and speak and tell the world like your power. I think I'm going to trigger some narcissistic personalities in this reading. I can already see the comments. I know, like that's what this is. So the Tree of Life and the Knight of Wands. This is just intense. You just want to go towards what feels so right for you. The Tree of Life and the Knight of Wands. The Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. Well then, you've certainly made your decision. You know where you want your abundance and your celebration and your prosperity and your happiness to lie. You know. There's no doubt for you. Oh my gosh, and the Hierophant at the bottom? I, I feel like you you know somebody is meant for you. Or if you're already in a, a, like a, a solid connection with someone, I do feel like this is going to a whole new level here. Like a whole new um, path and journey that you haven't taken with this person yet. It's really going beyond where you've been in a big way, in a really big way. You're ready. You're ready to go. You really are ready to go. There is no doubt for you. You have received all of the singles, single, all of the signals and synchronicities that the universe can throw at you, and you've put them all together. You've put the puzzle together, and you absolutely see it clearly, and you know what you want. Okay, so over here, this is a very um. Gosh, it's so gentle and peaceful. It's so gentle and peaceful and bountiful. Interesting I'm saying that too. Because the Nine of Pentacles is um, 
So it's kind of like the prize. You can look at that as like, it's often depicted as a prize. This is a person who has uh, an awful lot going for them. They're typically seen as someone, or at least you would see them as very physically attractive. This person has a lot of physical abundance around them. They're, this person, you may associate them with animals. The way she's holding the dove so gently, and the dove seems quite happy and content to be in this place. This is a place where, where nature abounds. This person, oh, there's another dove up there. It's almost like they're coming in. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny because I'm at my new house and I haven't had a chance to put the bird feeders up. I put one up on the window in the kitchen, one of the suction cup ones. But then I noticed all the morning doves, doves they spend the night underneath my tiny little deck. Isn't that funny? And I didn't realize that until Lily would go out in the morning and they would hear it and they would all fly out from under the deck and they would go sit on the house over there on the roof. So I started throwing seeds out. And I'm gonna like, the doves coming in, like the birds coming in. There's a very gentle, beautiful, abundant place. But you know, even though it has all these physical aspects of prosperity, you put these two cards in and it's a, it's a place of, it's a very safe place. It's a very safe place. There's depth of spirit, spirituality, um, the conscious mind, the sub, subconscious mind exists all in this place. Maybe it's a person for you with the nine of coins and nine of pentacles and the empress. Like you see someone here or you see someone that resides in a place or you see a place where you could see this for yourself. So, I'm not really there. The temple path. The temple path. Like, this is an energy that's outside of you. The lovers. Ooh. Wow, you feel divinely guided somewhere, man. You're really feeling like a destined connection. Divinely guided. Okay, so the two, the Nine of Coins and the Palace of Cups. The Nine of Coins and the Palace of Cups. The Six of Pentacles. You see equality here. You see equality equal giving and taking. I feel like you almost want to give to this or you feel that this person will also. See, well, that's what I like to say. If this is a healthy, if this is healthy too, with the Six of Pentacles, it is when you are in a position to give from a higher place you 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 do you want to freely and then it's i feel if this card is healthy this role can be reversed and um if this has to do with a relationship and i'm only saying that because you have the ten of pentacles the four of wands and the empress and the door of romance so i'm not and the lovers so i'm not really pushing it hard in that direction um when situations change or yeah like a situation changes and everybody has different strengths and weaknesses in a healthy situation then this person gives from a place of um, authority, you know, gives from a higher place, kind of supports you. So you see something equal here, the Palace of Cups, the Palace of Cups, wow, the Wheel and the Ace of Pentacles. You see like a, a change in a change in karmic cycle, a change in destiny, a shift in the in the wind, a shift in the wind to a new beginning. And it's very deep, a very, very deep and spiritual new beginning here. That seems to, on its own, hold abundance and beauty, prosperity, emotional and spiritual depth. It's pretty good. So what this is creating, I'm going to hold the moon here. It seems to be on its own. Maybe with the moon card, what this is creating, um, a deeper, like some sort of a connection here. Maybe you're feeling it too with the Palace of Cups. You're into, there's some sort, there's something here that you're not yet sure about. The Palace of Swords. Maybe you can feel this person emotionally if you're not connected, but you're not yet sure if you can feel their thoughts, if you can understand their thoughts, if they can yours. 
you definitely are connected emotionally. Is there a connection intellectually? Okay, I found this on the web for is there a connection intellectually? Check it out. Was I asking Siri? I don't know. Well, what is she telling us? How weird is that? Nine subtle signs you might not be intellectually compatible with your... Nine clear signs you're intellectually compatible with your partner. How do relationships benefit when you're intellectually... Da, 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 I don't know. <laughs> okay, thanks, Siri. You can go away now. Bye. All right. Did I call her name? <laughs> so... That was so weird. Okay, anyways, so... Goddess of the Moon... Goddess of the Moon. <clears throat> oh gosh, I don't know the order. I don't think it matters. Seven of Cups, Temperance, Page of Swords. It, you kind of feel like this is still in the fantasy stage. It kind of feels like it's a fantasy stage waiting and watching to make it real. It's in the, the fantasy the ethereal, allowing something to come into balance, being patient, divine timing and guidance, and watching and waiting, knowing, knowing. I think it's the knowing. I feel like you, I feel like you feel, but do you know? It seems like you know. Does this person know? Perhaps does this person know? Because you feel pretty strong on your what you know. Like your cards are pretty. You know what you want. You know what you see. So the death card and the hanging man. The death card and the hanging man. The death card and the hanging man. The queen of cups. Oh gosh, that's a big mess. But let's see. There's a whole big cards that came out. I don't know what those are. Um. Okay. <laughs> This is an interesting, a lot of cards come out, but it's a full on story here. So it started out with the Queen of Cups, with the death, the death card, Scorpionic energy, death and rebirth, and the hanged man. Having a very new perspective here, taking on a new perspective. And the Queen of Cups. So a new cycle with death and rebirth, what this is creating, these two energies, a new cycle of death and rebirth. To see things in a whole new way. And the Queen of Cups is mutual love, mutual feelings, mutual, like, connected emotionally. The Queen of Swords, the Eight of Cups, the Star, the King of Pentacles, and the Ten of Cups. Well, now you have the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles here. You know what I want to say, and it's kind of coming through with this... Queen of Swords and the Eight of Cups, and then the Star card. I feel like, like with these three cards, and then what comes in next, it feels like seeing something in a new way. Maybe seeing you in a new way, or you're seeing someone in a new way. And realizing that there's, there's some sort of mutual love and feelings here. And it feels like with the Queen of Swords, the Eight of Cups, and the Star, that this connection was cut out. Something about it was cut out. There was an emotional distancing here. There was a need to emotionally distance. And with the Star to heal, to heal something. So there's been healing here. If there's been emotional distance, it's because there was healing required. And almost now coming back from that point of healing with a new perspective. And that new perspective is mutual love. And then you have the King of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. And there you are. And all your finest glory, stability, abundance, and happy. It's like so much happiness and joy and love that grows from this. It's really good. It's really good. Oh, uh, oh and then there was two. Look at that. Two that were down, that were part of this pile, is the Five of Cups into the Ace of Cups. So it's taking that disappointment. It's taking something that just feels like it didn't work. Mm. Going from that energy to a brand new beginning in feelings and emotions. They're uplifted. 
This is being risen from the wall. <gasps> risen! I don't know my bum is going numb in this chair. I don't know if I changed the angle. Anyway, sorry. It's very distracting when that happens. So the palace of it, like it's risen. It's being risen from the depths. It's coming up from the depths. Divinely guided, divinely timed. Oh, and there's a dove. Yeah, this person has like little doves or little animals around them. I want to say, like just looking at this person, I feel like they probably connect better with animals and kids than they do with other people. I don't know. It's just like they seem sort of very innocent looking on their own and just like with the... The only thing in here with them is these little doves. So it does feel very pure. It does feel like whatever, whoever this is, it's outside of you. Capricorn is a very pure, loving, deep personality, I'll say. Oh, and the Nine of Pentacles is at the bottom. That's what we were just talking about over here. So, so now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my little cherub angels. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. I bought this deck. I still have it in my mind. I want to do a channel for kids. And it's sweet, cute stuff like this. Um, so these are really cute. So I'm going to, it works so well for Sag. So we're going to um, do it for you, Cap. Cabbage Corner. We're going to pull out a little cherub angel for your energy. A little cherub angel for the energy outside of you. And then a little cherub angel for the energy just being created between your two energies. So, okay. Can we get a card for Capricorn? Capricorn's energy. Oh, that's so crazy. This is the same card in the same spot. <laughs> Sagittarius. Spiritual gifts of seeing and feeling energy. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You are connected. Don't you? You're feeling something. Seeing and feeling. I think you're feeling it more than you're like seeing and believing it yet. Uh, I don't know. I think you're pretty strong on how you believe. I, like, yeah, you got that. Okay, so now the energy outside of you. The chair. Wow, that came out really fast. There's no one in this card. I, didn't, I thought all these cards had someone in them. Really? Is this like the only one like that? This person is on their own. Well, it's the Nine of Pentacles. Like, really on their own. There is not a single card in this deck that doesn't have anyone in it except this card. Have faith in God's miracles. <gasps> Look at the doves again. So this person is on some sort of a spiritual journey too. Very alone. They're on the temple path. This person is very isolated likely. The Palace of Cups too. Like this is a very deep place to be. And two white doves. Two white doves. Wow. Have faith in God's miracles. So this person is perhaps too trying to find meaning in their own life. And their path, they're trying to have faith. I feel like they're being asked to walk when they don't know where they're going. But and, and in some level, it's leaving an awful lot behind. I mean, I think it's very significant that the only card in this deck that doesn't have anyone in it, and they got it. So what are these two energies creating? Sensitivity is a gift. Wow. You know, I find it interesting because you have spiritual gifts of seeing and feeling energy. And sensitivity is a gift. I feel like maybe prior to connecting with this person, you didn't think that these things were a gift for you. Maybe they felt like a burden. And it can be. If you're very empathic or psychic, um, everything that comes with that, there is a huge, a huge, um, I guess, aspect of growing pains, understanding your own energy, your own feelings, when you need to pull away from others. Why am I feeling so down or, or why am I feeling these energies are so intense? 
realizing it's not you and and then like there's so much to go through in that and coming up with techniques to cleanse your own energy to 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 understand what you feel is you and what is not you it can be quite a journey to go through that and eventually come out on the other side realizing it's not a burden it's actually a huge gift and so sensitivity is a gift it's because this is the energy that's being created by both of these. So now I'm going to the little book and I'm going to read. Spiritual Gifts of Seeing and Feeling Energy. When you feel waves of energy moving, this means you are sensitive. It also means that you can send healing energy from your fingers to help others. Notice the feelings you have in your heart and your body. Hold out one hand and think of someone who needs help. Ask the love energy to go through your hands and fingers. Send it to the person who needs help. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Maybe like you sense, like this person is very much on their own. Maybe you can send them like healing, like thoughts of energy, even just physically. It's like my baby Yoda, baby Yoda. Should I get him? Do you want baby Yoda? I'm gonna get baby Yoda to the end. <laughs> yeah, he's over there. He's totally like, okay. Have faith in God's miracles. I'm curious to read this one. This is the only card. Oh, uh, wait, huh? Eight. <laughs> oh, here we go. There's H. There we go. Only card with no one in it. God loves you, and so do your angels. God can do anything. God's help is called a miracle. Heaven wants to help you. Tell God about your fears and prayers. Be sure to listen to the answers, which you will get through your feelings and hear in your thoughts. Wow, so this person I feel like is isolated specifically to connect on a deeper level. Now this is reminding me a bit of the Leaper reading. <laughs> and I can't remember because I did the reading twice. The first one didn't get recorded. So it kind of leaks through for me. Um, where being pushed in certain circumstances in life because that's the only way that's going to force you to use this aspect of yourself. And that's kind of what this person is going through. So opening up their gifts too. I almost feel like maybe your gifts are stronger or more developed or you've honed in on them a little more than this person. And so this person is in this situation to do that. So sensitivity is a gift. The angels want you to know that your feelings are a good thing. You are sensitive. When you have strong feelings, it is because you are a very special person. Being sensitive means that you are happier when you are with gentle people and in gentle places. Oh, this is <laughs> Capricorn. This is, what did I say? Like, this is the epitome of gentle. <laughs> like, wow. I feel like this is a good place for you. I don't know if it is for this person. <laughs> <laughs> but it is for you. I feel like it definitely is for you. Was there something else? Oh, baby Yoda. Let me get baby Yoda. All right, baby Yoda. Come here, buddy. Okay, so I got baby Yoda. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to perform for everyone, baby Yoda? You can do it. Okay, you ready? Baby Yoda. How many tarot readings do you get with a baby Yoda? Like one that actually does something. <laughs> you have to love baby Yoda, holy crap. <laughs> it's so cute. I want him. I want you to come to life and I want you in my house. Can you do that for me? Can you? Come on, let's do it. And then I want minions too. My son says, you don't want minions, mom. Like, I don't know, I think I do. I think it's one of those things where you fall in love with a puppy. <laughs> <gasps> gonna take that puppy home and then the puppy grows up into like a great big saint bernard and it slobbers <laughs> it makes a mess and it knocks over shit every nice piece of furniture you ever had is gone but god you love that dog so much because it's such a big goof it's kind of like that if i had a baby yoda and a couple of minions but i think you need to have three i think you really need to have three minions and i bet you baby yoda could keep them in check that would be perfect wouldn't it <laughs> 
I know, I really have not grown up at all, have I? No. Okay, so, the, I'm go oh, I'm gonna go do <laughs> extended reading. I have to go do your extended. So I'm gonna go do your extended, and we're gonna see where these energies continue to go. I'm really actually intrigued by this energy over here. And what's going on over here? Yours is just like in your face. I know what's going on. Very Capricorn. So let's move it down. Baby Yoda, who will hang out on the table with us to do your extended. And that's it, Capricorn. There you go. First reading in the new place for you. Mm -mm -mm. It's good. I love it. The energy is flowing. Okay. <sighs> I'm all. I thought, do I have anything to talk about? Yeah, I do have stuff to talk about. I said I would chit chat at the end. I'm kind of hungry, but I can put that off, I guess. Um. My son went back to school today, so it's quiet in the house. I love him so much. But you know what? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. It really does. So he decided he was going to take the school bus. And I'm kind of proud of him. Because he's very needy. He's always been really needy with me. Oh my gosh. I don't know why. Yeah. But anyway, so... I was always a very independent child, but he's not really like that. Anyways, and he's kind of shy, and I was not shy. Um, so, the last house, he qualified to take the school bus, but he doesn't want to. So I thought, all right, I'll play this out a little longer. And um, so we moved here, and yeah, he, and the funny thing is, so, uh, friends of his in the same community take a school bus too, but it's not the same bus. But he was actually okay with that. I was a little worried that he was going to say, I don't want to take it now, but he was still fine with it. So this morning we walked to the bus stop. Lily put her little booties on because it's like minus 17 out here today. And uh, we walked to the bus stop and Lily was super excited because there's people, she was really, she's funny because she's been upset of the lack of routine. Like her routine is we take the boy to school. We take the boy to school and we, we go for our walkies. We come home, she gets a greenie and then I get in my my space here, do the readings, and she lays in her bed until it's lunchtime. <laughs> like, she likes this to find, yeah, and then at a certain time, we got to go and get the boy. So, <laughs> she, and like, dog, she has a vocabulary, and she knows when we say, okay, we're going to school now, we're going to go to school, but that was not what was said this morning. It was, we're going to go get the bus. So, she's standing, and she won't come to the door, and she's like in her little short, I call her short stack, because she's short. And she's standing there, and she's very fluffy right now. I wish she was here. Lily, where are you? Lily, come here. I hear clicky toes. <laughs> Lily, come here. Give me one sister. Come here, I'm talking about you. Oh, were you sleeping? Are you tired? Or are you going to, no, come here. Oh, God, no, she wants me to rub her tummy. <laughs> she's laying on the floor. Little monkey, come here! Oh my God! Oh God, she's a baby. She needs to go on a diet too. We're working on that, but she's not. Oh, she's not very happy about being on a diet. So, but I think it's needed. I mean, just yeah. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. So, <laughs> she's mad at me, and I think she's on a diet. <laughs> Are you mad at mommy? Are you mad at me? I love you. I don't want you to have joint problems or diabetes or anything like that. Yeah, I want you to be healthy. I know. I know you don't associate that with, with health. Anyway, so, okay. <laughs> so, here's Lily. She's very fluffy. <laughs> She's very fluffy. She would not come. She's looking at us getting ready. I said, we're going to go get the bus. We're going to get the bus. She wouldn't come. She's just give me a look. Yeah, you play. Yeah, I need to. I need to brush you, you though. I know, but you're always pretty. So, um, <laughs> I said school bus. School, school. I don't know what the thing at the end of that was, but okay. And then she came to the door. So we put our boots on, and it is COVID, and not everyone likes dogs. So I respect that. So I kept her leash short, and she wanted to go and see everybody at the stop, but no, she. We just had to stand and wait. <laughs> Give her and everyone the eye. She's really looking intensely at the camera. Do you see how pretty you are? Yeah, you know it. You know you got it going on. Yeah, you're a cuddle bug. I love you. You're my good girl. You're such a good girl. Oh my god. I don't. I bless you. Bless you. 
So, yeah, he got on the bus. It's a long story. The reading's over anyway, so I can chitty chat with you. And um, it reminded me of, so my son did not do well in daycare. He did not do well in daycare, like when he was two years was he two years old? Yeah. I thought it'd be good to socialize him and do that. Oh, it was a disaster. He got so sick. He refused to eat and drink in daycare. So can you imagine like a two-year-old not eating? Drink? So he started to get, um, he got sick. He got really sick. He ended up with strep throat that I was a new mom. I thought he was teething. That's what I thought was going on because he couldn't talk to really tell me. And I thought he was teething. But it ended up being strep throat and it, it went a little too long and it went through his system and he ended up with a urinary tract infection. And he got to like, and I'm with a pediatrician and um, he was asking me questions like, why do you think your son's anemic? Why do you think? <laughs> and then I told him, I said, he's not doing well in daycare. He doesn't eat, he doesn't drink in there. And the pediatrician said to me, he said, those places are just horrible, horrible um vectors for for bacteria and sickness and and he said to me he said a lot of people don't realize that a person's immune system is not fully developed until they're six years old so if he's not eating and drinking he's really making himself susceptible so i was in a position to take him out and i did he was not ready the crying and the screaming was horrible so this is where my story is going yeah i know i take a long time to get there don't i lily and so um so when it was time for kindergarten, um, I thought, oh God, how's this gonna go? Is it gonna be like daycare? No. I was the one that cried. He was fine. He was fine. He was excited to go. He had his little backpack. He wanted to ride that where we lived at the time, it was like a, a five minute walk to the school and he wanted to ride his bike. So we rode his bike and I think we were in the afternoon because kindergarten when they first got right it was a, I think we went after lunch for a half day and we met in the library and he went with his little group and the teacher took them and they just walked single file down the hallway and he never looked back. I remember coming out of the library and looking down the hallway thinking he would go, no, he never looked back. He never looked back and I walked home and I cried. <laughs> oh my God, he's going to be there. Yeah, so... I feel like that's what the bus was for him this morning. I didn't cry while I wanted to do that today, but I did feel like, oh, this is a shift. This is a big, it's a big change, isn't it, Lily? Yeah, he was not hesitant. He wanted to go on it. He was ready to go. Um, yeah, not, and, did, and he didn't look back. He didn't look, he got on it and went, and I'm waving like, it's just, and he's not, he's a white kid that's not even looking. <laughs> Well, he's done with us, Lily. So Lily and I went for a little walk. And um, yeah, so he did that. So we have to go and pick him up today. I want to do that. Eventually, I'd like him to, um, he's almost 11, to kind of get on and off on his own. I think that's important for him to develop that. Um, and the confidence and knowing that he can achieve those things and do it on his own. It's not far from the house. I can almost see the bus stop from the house. So it's, it's really close. Um, but yeah, until he gets familiar with exactly where he's supposed to be getting off, we need to sort of be like maybe that, um... I mean, you got a thing in your beard. I know you don't like me fix it, but you know what? It has to be done. She's like, she reminds me of a three-year-old or a two-year-old. You know, when you feed them and you got to wipe their face and... <laughs> yeah, no, it's in their beard. I need to take it out. I do. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> so, it's just me and Lily right now. Uh-huh. And we have to do the extended for Capricorn. I need to trim your nails. I'm really lucky. She has clear nail nails. She's the first dog I ever had that has clear nails. So you can see the quick. Oh, yeah, I love that. So it's easy to trim them. We need to trim them. We need to trim them. Gosh. Oh, what? There's nothing wrong with them. No, they're just getting a little bit long. Yeah. And she's fluffy because it's very cold out. So we let her get big, big fuff fuff. Big, big fuff fuff this time of year. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, um, what else going on? We moved to a new place, we're here. It's quiet. Actually, the bus stop is the most people I've seen since I've been here in a week. It's really funny. They all came out. And it was kids I know, too. I'm thinking, why am I even seeing you guys? Like, nobody's coming out 
here. It's weird. The other neighborhood people came outside. What's up with that, Eddie? Why there nobody coming outside here? Maybe because maybe because since we moved here, it's been like minus 20. Maybe I, I might have something to do with it. <laughs> I could have something to do with it. Possibly, eh, Lily? Look at his leg. It's quite meaty. Yeah. It could be like a little roast. Oh, yum, yum. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Yeah. Oh, no. I would not eat you. Oh, my God. I wouldn't eat you. You know that. You should know that. You're a good girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? I wiped off her kiss, so she wiped off mine. Yeah. <laughs> your personality, aren't you? This is your personality. Yeah. I know. You want to go lay in your bed so I can do the extended for Capricorn? I know. I love you too. I do. You want to come down now? What do you want? Uh, okay. Okay. There you go. Say bye. <laughs> That's a good girl. That's not in good shape. That's same though. Okay. <sighs> Alright. I don't know if I have anything else to say. Oh, you know what I want to do? Well, I shouldn't say it. I'm not going to say it. I don't want to get people's hopes up and then I don't have time to do it. So I'm not going to say it. It's an idea I have. I have no ideas and I never have enough time to do them all. Okay, I know, you kind of like to, like you have all these ideas and inspirations, but you just don't have time to execute them all. You just have to kind of stick with at least one thing here. Um, that's it. That's all I got for you. So, I'm going to go do the extended and see where this energy continues to go. You're all fired up, I'll tell you that. And this person is just, uh, I don't know, it's like they're in a little oasis. Yeah. That's it, Capricorn. I really, I don't think I have any, it's, it's like COVID. There's like really, outside of moving and school starting, which are big things, there's nothing really to talk about. I think I've already voiced all of my frustrations with moving. I want to put it all behind me. Oh, so exhausted. I'm finally like getting over that. At one point, I really thought to myself, I think it's going to take me a month to recover from this. Even just physically. But I've been sleeping really well. At night, this area is so quiet. I don't know, maybe too, because it's a new house. I think the house is only four years old. So if all the seals are really, really good, so that like no sound comes, but really no, there's no one, <laughs> there's no one out there. So it's quiet. Um, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling better. I'm waiting for a new rebounder. I think some of you know, I think I talked about that on Capricorn. It's, what, it's, my, it's my exercise thing. Um, I love rebounding. It's like the mini trampoline. The one I had, it's bit the dust. It kind of bit the dust. So I decided to get a new one and I'm waiting. I'm waiting ever so patiently. Um, I phoned them and there's two styles. There's one where the legs are on springs and they fold in and there are the other ones where they're bolted. And so the, the foldable legs are obviously like if you want to travel with it a lot I'm going to do that so I just want it and it's more money to get the foldable legs so I thought no, I'm just going to get the stationary legs but apparently that one is hard to get right now they're like big time back ordered when I called them so the girl she was uh, that I spoke with um she said well we can get you the one with the foldable legs typically it's 88 dollars us more so that would work out to probably over 100 dollars Canadian <laughs> Um, but because, but there's more of those ones. We have those. We can ship them. They're going to ship it out. I think it's shipping this week. So hopefully next week I'll get it because I have not exercised either. Probably about three weeks. I've been doing some stretches, but you know, it's funny. I was talking to my mom about that and I said, I am so physically exhausted. Well, I was, I've noticed the last couple of days it's gotten better. Each day is a little better. And, um, I said to her, I said, you know what, I think everything happens for a reason. Well, I hope it does. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but I think that did. I think it was important for my body to literally, like, not do anything. Not even, like, rebounding. To really heal. Because I was, yeah, every, every tendon muscle from almost my toes to my scalp. Really sore. And I was tired. I was really tired. <laughs> I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> I hate it when you got to do stuff like that and you kind of because I think deep down 
inside, we feel like, I still feel like, you know, well, here I am, <laughs> baby Yoda, and wanting minions in the house. There's nothing, no, you know, immature about that. So, and then your body is just not keeping up with that anymore, is it, Yoda? I know. Yeah, I know. So, I will be getting my new rebounder, and that will be nice to do that again, hopefully next week. That's about it. I, I don't know. Nothing to talk about. It's kind of like I talked to my mom the other day for the first time in a couple weeks because I've been so busy. And we didn't have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Actually, she had a hair appointment. She was so excited. Because up where she is, that's opened up. So she went and got her hair cut. Yeah. Like, wow. That's big. Well, and my son went to school today. So that's big. That's it. Yeah. That's all. There, we're going to finish it. I'm just... I'm just looking for stuff to talk about. I'm not finding it. So what time is it? Oh, it's, it's snack time. Oh, I got to do your extended. Maybe I should have a snack before I do the extended. Yeah, because I'm going to get hungry. And that's not good. I can get grumpy if I get hungry. Yeah, okay. So that's it. That's over. I'm all done. That's all Capricorn. <laughs> Until next time, my dear Cabbage Corn friends. Do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.